everybody, welcome to Tapless Baker. Now this week I'm doing a recipe inspired by my area, London. So there's a mac and cheese place in London called Annie Mays. And if you're in London and you want mac and cheese, you go to Annie Mays because it's kind of a famous place. And they do like a basil bacon mac and cheese. So I'm gonna recreate it doing my own twist on like a basil bacon mac and cheese, which is like a pimped up, way better version of a normal mac and cheese. So. I've already cooked some macaroni because I figure you don't need to know how to cook macaroni, right? You just follow the box. All you wanna do is cook it for two minutes less than what they say, okay? Because we're gonna put it in the oven. And then what I'm gonna show you how to do is make a delicious cheese sauce in which we're gonna load with cheese, okay? So I'm gonna add some butter into a pan. I'm gonna create a roux, which is a flour and butter mixture. So pop that into your pan and then literally put it on a low heat and just let it melt. So my butter is foamy and looks pretty good. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of paprika to this, okay? Just to kind of flavor up that cheese sauce. You could use like mustard powder, you could put a little bit of garlic in there as well. That is always a good option. And then I'm gonna add in my flour. And the flour and the butter are gonna thicken into this paste, okay? And that is what is gonna give you a really thick kind of glorious cheese sauce and it's basically one part butter, one and a half parts flour, okay? So mix this together, okay? And you'll see it kind of form this like sticky paste. And you wanna cook it for about a minute because at the moment that flour has a really floury taste. So if you cook it, you'll cook out the taste of the flour, which we don't want in our cheese sauce. So just let it bubble away, give it a little whisk to get it around the edges of the pan, and then we can start adding our milk. Right, so this is all cooked out now, and what I've got here is some whole milk, okay? If you're gonna do mac and cheese, you gotta do it properly here, and you want some full fat milk, and you wanna drop in just a little bit, okay? Just about two tablespoons, and you're gonna whisk that together, and you'll see it kind of steam up. And what you're looking is for that flour and that milk to kind of incorporate, and you see immediately it thickens up into that paste. That means you can add some more milk, okay? And you basically just wanna keep adding the milk slowly and slow, slowly and slowly? That doesn't even make sense. A little bit at a time until all that kind of flour and milk is all married together. And then once you've added all of your milk, we can start adding our cheese. So once I added all of my milk in, I've just been cooking this for about like two, three minutes. And you see it kind of turns into this like velvety, shiny, looking sauce, okay? And now there's just a few elements to add. So I'm gonna crack in, crack in, twist in, shake in some black pepper, and I'm gonna stir that through. And now the most important element to your cheese sauce. I've got cheddar cheese, which I'm gonna throw in, and this is really gonna thicken up the sauce, okay? And you wanna stir that in and kind of let it melt away, okay? And you'll see it immediately kind of lump into this glorious cheesy goodness okay so just stir that through look at that oh my gosh and then i want another element of cheese i want two cheese in this so i'm going to go in with parmesan as well okay parmesan is one of my favorite cheeses so i'm going to go in with loads of that and then again i'm just going to give it a good stir just to mix this through okay and you'll see it almost looks like custard it's so thick and that's exactly what you want. You want a super thick cheese sauce, okay? Have a little taste, because at this point, there isn't really a recipe for this. You add as much cheese as you want. If you want it cheesier, you go for it, okay? So I'm having a little taste. It tastes amazing to me. I think it needs a little bit more Parmesan though. So in we go with that. Okay, and now you just combine everything. So like I said, I've already cooked my macaroni because you guys don't know this, we've shown how to cook macaroni and I've undercooked it a little bit because we're gonna put this in the oven. So I cooked it for about six minutes instead of eight, but follow the package instructions. And now I'm gonna pour in my cheese sauce and look at this, just flow in, okay? And it just covers all of that macaroni and you're gonna stir this guy together so it's all really nice. I mean, look at that. But I said we were gonna pimp this mac and cheese up, okay? So I've got some bacon here. This is actually pancetta, which I've fried. It's really super crispy. So I'm gonna go in, Owen, with my pancetta, and I'm gonna stir that through. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay. 
And then the final bit is a little bit of fresh basil, which I'm just gonna chop up now. And I just wanna cut this into kind of thin, small chunks, okay? So it's nice and evenly distributed into my mac and cheese when I throw it in. And once you're done with that basil, scoop it into your hand, okay? And just, boom, in there like that, okay? And it adds a lovely color to what is quite a beige dish, okay? I'll be honest, mac and cheese is pretty beige, isn't it? All right, so stir that guy through. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. And I'm gonna cook this in a skillet. I love cooking everything in a skillet. You can just throw this in a big tray, but literally pour that in like that. Okay, spread it into those corners like this. And then this is the real game changer, okay? That is good. You could cook that and you'd get a nice crispy top mac and cheese. But you wanna take your mac and cheese to the next level, the pro leagues, okay? And this is a secret. Panko breadcrumbs, okay? This is a Japanese breadcrumb and you see, it's a bit crunchier, it's a bit thicker than a usual breadcrumb. So try and get yourself some panko breadcrumbs. If you can't, don't panic, normal breadcrumbs will work. But literally, you just wanna coat the top of your mac and cheese with these panko breadcrumbs. And I promise you, it takes this from kind of like a soft dish with soft pasta and soft sauces to this like crunchy textural party that's going on in your mouth, okay? So throw those all over the top and then it wouldn't be complete without more cheese because it wouldn't be a mac and cheese that way, okay? And then literally, this guy goes in the oven for 15, 20 minutes. We're just looking for that to golden up. We're looking for it to be bubbly around the edges. And then I can eat this entire skillet of mac and cheese. Right, have a look at what we have got on our hands now, okay? So you've kind of got this crispy Parmesan panko layer on top, and then you've got these golden, like, roasted bits of cheese and macaroni around the edge, which are the, oh, it's just amazing. I'm just, this is a lot, but I'm just gonna dive in, okay? And this is gonna be screaming hot, okay? So I need to, I'm either gonna run out of this kitchen crying because it's gonna be so hot, but you're gonna witness it all on camera. Okay, here we go. Oh, oh, oh. But it tastes so good. So hot. Mmm. It is so delicious. It's got like gooey cheesiness, it's got those crispy breadcrumbs, and then you get that smoky bacon basilness going on. It is delicious, guys, okay? So switch up your mac and cheese game. Have a go at this guy. Get some panko breadcrumbs going on. And I'll see you guys next week for more Topless Baker. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye. Mm. So hot.